first request this evening comes from Hebrews chapter 1, 13, Hebrews chapter 13. I was going to say that's a very long passage we're taking this from. Okay, Hebrews chapter 13. And verse 21. This is part of his prayer there. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now our prayer this evening is that God would make us perfect in every good work to do his will. Uh, this is staggering when you think about this, that men have been called to do the work of God. And not just to work for God, but to, to actually be perfect in every good work and to do the will of God. Now, that's one thing to just be told, go do that and go do this and stay away from that. But this isn't the kind of thing that this prayer is encompassing. It's talking about having a fellowship with the mind of God and with the heart of God in these things. To be actually, to enjoy a fellowship with God as he works out his purpose. And in such a manner as God is to be seen in us as we do this. This is a very high calling. Like I said, it's staggering if you really think about the ramifications. Now, a person who isn't really convinced that God is, this, you know, they can just pass on by. But when you really slow down and think about what, like, what are we saying that God, it's God's will and to be perfect in every good work before God. Well, this in itself is a work of God. And that's why we're praying be it that God would cause us to be this and cause us to act in such a manner that God would make us. See, he had to make us to begin with, and he has to make us to be able to do this too. Amen. So th this, is, this is still the creative processes of God. Uh, we witness tonight the new creation. Again, the beginning here of a new creation. God made something tonight that didn't exist before this evening. And so th this is this is beginning here. But now this is something that everyone that God has done that work in. Now this is the continuing of work in us. It's not to be thwarted or stopped. This isn't like a an unusual thing and those that want to be the super spiritual now this is now we're praying for the people that are really serious. Like if you're not really serious, you're not really a saint. God's not accepting half-heartedness, uh -huh. and he doesn't have to accept imperfection because he's the one that is making us perfect. Amen. Yes. So we're asking for his, his will and his work to like run and have free course in us mm -hmm. so that um, we, we can, and this will bring us a great deal of joy too, and confidence and assurance of faith. Whenever we see these things in us, then we know, we have that witness in ourselves that it's not by our design or by our power or by our intelligence that these things are accomplished, but rather it is the Lord. Yes. And so we, we give Him glory for that and we ask Him for it. Every good work to do His will. And of course, uh, along with that, He is going to illumine to us what exactly a good work is. Not just going around doing what men would call good deeds. We like goodness and kindness and gentleness and sweetness and politeness and all those things. But they're not enough. Yeah, it's good to have those. But you have to be able to do the work of God in order for it to be a good work. So who will lead us in that request? That God would make us perfect in every good work to do His will. Brother Jeremy, Sister Sydney, Sister Bailey. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we are going next to 2 Timothy <clears throat> chapter 3 and verse 15. 
It says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And our prayer is that all professing believers would have the wisdom that comes from knowing the scriptures. Now, brethren, <clears throat> this is the weak, the, it's kind of like the first weakness. If you're ignorant of the word of God, how can you please God? How can a person ignore what is available to them concerning the revelation of God and then think that he can please God in any other thing? If a person is ignorant of what God has said in this society, you are largely willfully ignorant. You're, a lot, you're, you're willing to allow someone else to limit what you know about God. Now, I understand that God puts teachers and preachers in the body for the edifying of, of the saints. And not everybody can, you can't just open your Bible and say, all right, I'm just going to dig all of this stuff out for myself. I don't need anybody else. I can get it all. No, it doesn't work that way. But if, if any person is sitting under teaching that they know is inferior, that's a confession that they're satisfied with that. Yes. What knowledge can a person attain that is more precious or more valuable than the knowledge of God? There isn't any other knowledge above that. And every other knowledge is subordinate to that. And anything that is profitable and anything that is going to last beyond our leaving of this world is going to be connected to the knowledge of God. The rest of it is a loss. Amen. In fact, for us of us that are, are going to be able to slough off some of it, it's going to be a gain to us because we have this other, and it, we won't have those competitive interests. But if that's all you've got, then you're going to suffer a lot of loss. That's part of the loss that you'll, that you'll have to... You'll, you'll have to let go of these things. First off, it won't do you any good where you're going. But... Our prayer that professing believers, see, there's a, there's a particular um, responsibility for those who take upon themselves the name of God to be godly. Can you see Jesus as he was growing up as a youth to say, oh, do we have to go to synagogue again? Or I don't like, I don't like Rabbi so-and-so's preaching. He's boring. Or, that one's too far away. This rabbi, he teaches better than this one, but this one's closer. We'll just go here. That's good enough. I don't see any of that stuff at all. Seeking the Lord begins at all levels. And this right here, uh, having that have wisdom that comes from knowing the scriptures. If you know anything about the scriptures, your first wisdom is you need to know all of them that you need to, to dig in and know what God has said. Now, once you know it, and once you believe it, then God needs, he, he ministers the wisdom that's contained in it. You can walk circumspectly before men and before God, the angels beholding your conduct and marveling at the grace of God, which is operating in you. You have by the scriptures, by faith in the scriptures, you can know more than you dare to imagine that you could know. Mm -hmm. You might not build rockets, but you're going to go way beyond where the rockets can go. You're going to be in the heavenlies. Even while you're here, your mind can operate in high realms. And you'll have that wisdom of God so that whenever, whether, whether the times are calm, you'll be a good steward of, of the peace and the safety that God gives you. If things are uh, in turmoil, God can show you how to navigate through that without it being disruptive to your faith. It won't interfere with or interrupt your fellowship with God. And we can go to him and ask. He's, he's very liberal in his supply of wisdom, but it's going to be founded. God is going to answer according to the things that he's revealed. And so from a child, we, uh, it's a good thing 
that we fill our minds with what God has said because there's a great deal of wisdom that he has invested in these revelations. Uh, when I say revelations, I'm talking about the aspects, not that, that it's a multiplicity. It is the word of God. But uh, having wisdom that comes from knowing the scriptures. See, that's what the Spirit of God does. Something comes up, and you'll find yourself, all of a sudden, you'll be thinking about something God has said about either what you should be doing or the situation or something that clarifies to you whether this thing is a good thing or an evil thing. You'll, you'll have wisdom. So that's what we're praying for. And we want it for all professed believers because we serve a, a great God and he's worthy of servants that his servants should be great because of his greatness. Not, not great among men, but great in the things of God. Mm -hmm. So who will lead us in that request that all professing believers would have the wisdom that comes from knowing the scripture? Sister Nikki, Sister Rachel, Sister Annie, Sister Sarah. Okay. All right, and then finally, brethren, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. That all believers would know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge. It's kind of hard to talk about something that passes all knowledge. But there, there is something that is so high and so deep and so wide that if you try to, to, to lay it out and just explain it to somebody, it would be beyond your capacity to explain it fully. We know quite a bit about it. The Apostle Paul did speak on these things. It's not like a mystery, mysterious thing. But to know it, to know it, that, that means... You've imbibed it. You've experienced it. You operate according to it. You know it. You have experience with it. So that in this love of God, you don't have to say, if somebody says, does, does Jesus love you? You don't have to say, well, and you could quote him a few scriptures about, you know, who Jesus loves. But to know the love of Christ is to operate within the context of that knowledge, to Amen. to be moved by the knowledge that Christ has loved you, to be constrained by the knowledge that Christ loves you, to be emboldened by the knowledge that Christ loves you, and to to have that joy that sustains us by knowing that Christ loves you. It keeps you in the race. It makes you press forward. It gives you joy along the way. It, it'll cause you to look to him first instead of second or third or fourth. It'll, it'll make you love the things he says. See, it works in us, this, this knowing the love of Christ, which passes understanding. It will, have, it will bear evidence. It'll bear fruit in, in us as we know it. So who will lead us in that? That all believers would know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge. Sister Hannah, Sister Ada. All right, thank you, brethren. Brother Judah is going to come up and read the sermon text, and Brother Michael will be bringing our message tonight. And um, Brother Paul, would you please pray for Brother Michael as he comes up? Thank you. Dear gracious Father, we are greatly thankful that you have